Payload comes with a super customizable authentication pattern that you can use directly in your own apps. It works with native apps, web apps, you could use Next.js or anywhere that you can think of. Then all of your auth operations like login, log out, forgot password, these will be given to you so you won't have to build a thing, you can simply start using them. These operations will be available through the REST API, GraphQL and within Node itself. Using Payload's auth features can help you and your team move much quicker and you get to work with easy to manage, reusable, clean code. This is a sample project that uses Payload's authentication with Next.js. To log a user in, we just have a simple form that fires a fetch request on submit. The request that we're sending looks like this. It's making a post request to API slash the slug of your user's collection slash login. Credentials includes refers to cookies, authorization headers and TLS client certificates, but we'll come back and talk a little more about this later. And in the body to log in, we're passing a value for email and password. Then we're just waiting for the request. And if for some reason it's unsuccessful, that will be caught with our try catch. Now back to our sample project, let's see this request being made in real time. And to do that, I'm going to open the network panel. And when I hit submit, we'll see our request. Here it is, you can see the request URL as well as the method. And if we look down in the response headers, you'll notice this set cookie header that's being delivered by payload. How this works is after a user is logged in successfully, payload generates a unique JSON web token and saves that value as a HTTP only cookie. Then your browser will store that cookie and continue to use it until it expires. HTTP only cookies are highly secure and cannot be accessed at all via the browser, making them completely protected from common XSS attacks. All you have to do to authenticate the logged in user from this point on is simply to make sure all your requests include the cookie that payload has set for you. And you can do this really easily just by including the credentials include property that we saw earlier. If we include credentials on all our fetches, the token will be passed back to payload in the cookie header of each request. Payload then passes the cookie, checks the token and will respond accordingly. So let's test this out by making another fetch request. This time it's going to be to the slash me endpoint. And if a user passes the authorization, the request will return all the data on the current user. By including this credentials include, the payload token will automatically be passed in the cookie header and will allow payload to identify this user. So let's check this out in our sample project. This page is making a fetch request to the slash me endpoint to populate all of the user's data. So if I refresh, we should be able to take a look at that request. Here it is. And if we go down to the request headers this time, voila, you can see that our cookie has been included. And as a result, our response was successful and we can see all of the data on our user. Now, if I want to log out a user, we can send a request to slash logout like so. And this simply deletes the user's cookie and as a result, the user is no longer authorized. This method of using a JSON web token with HTTP only cookies is the default authorization strategy at payload. However, you can integrate different strategies and in some cases, it might be best to use API keys. For example, say you have a third party service that you want to integrate, but it needs the ability to identify a specific user. With cookies, you would need to log in each time, retrieve the JSON web token, and then pass that to your third party service. With API keys, you can generate a non-expiring key that is unique to each user and can be used to authorize them. Although technically both of these methods would work for a third party integration, the API key method is much simpler because it reduces the amount of work that you need to do and works seamlessly with existing auth operations. API keys will be generated on a user by user basis. It's important to know these are meant to represent just a single user. After you generate an API key on the user, you can pass it as an authorization header in your request like this. And then payload will be able to authorize your user that is associated with this API key. Like API keys, there are some super useful auth options that you can use like lock time and max login attempts, token expiration, 
You can set custom emails for resetting your password and verifying users. And on top, all of the authentication is fully extensible. So if you can build it, you can integrate it. That's all from me. You can find the sample project that I used in the payload repo under examples, and you can learn more about authentication with the payload docs. Thank you for watching.